Okay, this is Druid4574 with the advanced uh, mech design and key mapping video. This video clears uh, up any holes that I might have in my other training videos and is mostly, so I won't actually be playing any in this, in this video. We'll be talking about um, mech design and star mates and how to map the keys. So let's do keys first. Um, and that's in the cockpit controls menu here. Now, in order to change configurations, you'll need to hit the custom configuration button. And um, I'll load my custom one, which is my uh, current cockpit loadout. So um, it, it's pretty straightforward as far as mapping keys are concerned. Um, you just select your, um, the keyboard is the most uh, difficult one to do, so select your input to device over here, and then you can scroll through the buttons and see uh, what the game detects as far as your uh, keys. Now I'm playing on a, a very new laptop and I think it gets very confused with some of the keys, and I had to remap some things because things were in odd places and sometimes they would, you know, if you hit a key, it would start switching on and off as fast as possible and it, that would create problems. So anyway, um, you can set uh, um, four sets of controls for everything, so primary, secondary, uh, tertiary, and quaternary controls. And it's, for some things it can be extremely useful. Um, for my purposes, uh, most of the time I played this game I played with keyboard only, with no joystick or mouse or anything. And I decided to learn how to use the mouse uh, for the game, so you'll see that um, my quaternary controls are the mouse, and I tend to use that for um, um, almost everything. So I'll use my mouse for my, for my torso twist and such. Every time you see we move the torso of the mech, that will be mouse instead of using the arrow keys and the comma and period button, which was the original key map for playing with just the keyboard. If you want to change the cockpit controls, like I said, um, if one of them's already assigned, you can hit the right um, mouse button. So jump jets, for example, you can hit right key to, de to uh, remove that map, and then you can put something else in it that's unassigned, like minus key. Um, now, of course, I don't want to actually save that, so I'm going to abort. And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can map the controls however you want, whatever seems to work the best. Um, so this is kind of a prelude to doing the missions for Falcon Clan, so I'll just go there. And um, we'll demonstrate how to do that in uh, the first mission briefing. Register Simco identity. So here's my pilot that just finished the training, and this time we'll go to the ready room. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about designing a mech. Um, and you can select a mech that, they, uh, that the game recommends, and you can read that in the mission briefing. Uh, for all of the missions, you're given a tonnage maximum, and then you can switch through the chassis and also the game's original variants, which are called alternate configs. So this one's alternate config A of the Storm Crow. If I go back to this one, it's the primary config for that mech. Um, then chassis, we can switch between um, the various uh, chassis that are available. Now I could go up to 65 tons and use either one of these. Um, so just for fun, let's pick this one and we're gonna uh, look at customizing it. Let's customize this Hellbringer. So uh, you go through everything. Uh, you can choose a different engine here. Now the type of engine, uh, if you select standard, notice that I'm over tons now, a standard engine is heavier but it doesn't use as many critical spots. And the critical spots is maybe the most important part of designing a mech, that and the weight. So let's look at the criticals. I don't have any unassigned criticals right now, but I'll unassign some things so that we can play around with it. Oops. I can't take out essential parts. Okay. 
So um, I've got some unassigned criticals here. Now, if I try to save this, it'll give me an error and say that the, there are unassigned criticals detected, which means that I can't use this mech. Um, I have to put them somewhere or delete things. Um, and uh, so let's put these weapons in another place. Now, uh, some other things you can do to help with weight and criticals are using the internal type, internal structure type. And there's two types. There's the standard and the endo steel. The difference is uh, the standard is heavier, but the endo steel requires criticals. So now you'll see there's a whole bunch of these that I have to assign. And the same thing for armor. We've got standard armor, uh, which uh, is heavier. And then I could also choose ferrofibrous armor, which um, is lighter. See, it gives me more armor points here that I can uh, assign to the mech. So why don't I do that? Here's the left leg. So it says I can have up to 30 armor points. So I can uh, put that up to maximum because I want my left leg to be heavily armored. And my left, my, my right leg, I will also want heavily armored. So I'll increase that. Now you see I've run out of armor points, so I need to add some more and then take that up like that. Um, so let's see, heat sinks. These, um, if you have any space, either weight or criticals whatsoever, I like to put heat sinks in just because it helps with heat management. The more heat sinks, the better, uh, generally, I think, in my opinion. Double heat sinks, um, let's see, I can't remember if there's any significant difference between using single or double heat sinks. Um, I don't think so. It just, uh, with doubled heat sinks, the... Um, um, I actually, I need to add a few. With doubled heat sinks, I think, yeah, see, they're, they're grouped together, so I have to put two in at a time. If there's only one slot available, I can't do that. So here in my head, I can't. It won't let me do that. Okay, so jump jets. Um, these can be really useful for two reasons. You can have a light mech that can actually do jumping and maneuvering with jump jets. Um, but they can also be useful in a heavier mech. Uh, you put like you put a couple in there, and they'll give you maneuverability, so you can um, uh, th they'll let you turn really quickly, even if you're moving forward, which I find to be useful sometimes in advanced combat. Um, again, uh, in each of the uh, videos, you may end up learning something new because I'll use. Uh, as many aspects of the game as possible, uh, jump jets, armor, internals, and also all the weapon types. So weapons in this game are uh, grouped into three subcategories. Uh, and the first one here are the, uh, the lasers, the energy weapons. So you have pulse lasers, which, uh, so small, medium, large, that just refers to their damage and range. So for example, the small pulse laser here, you can see its stats. Um, it doesn't weigh very much, it doesn't take very many criticals, doesn't do a whole lot of damage or produce a lot of heat, but the range is only 200 meters. If I take it up to the medium pulse laser, weighs a little bit more, has more heat, does significantly more damage and has greater range. And the large pulse laser, uh, much heavier, uh, greater range and generates a ton of heat. Uh, so the difference between these ER lasers and the pulse lasers is that the ER lasers are at the e extended range, so they have more range on average than the pulse lasers. They fire much more slowly than the pulse lasers, however, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, right, so these are basically rapid fire and these are slower to use. So the special case and the energy weapons is the particle cannon. This is ERPPC, and you'll use uh, you'll see me use this weapon uh, quite a bit. Now they list the range as being 746 meters. In reality, it's double that. Um, they're very long range. They do tons of damage. They produce a lot of heat. They weigh quite a bit. Um, they also do splash damage, which I find interesting. It's basically a big energy ball. Uh, kind of a sort of laser shotgun, if you will, but extended range. So the second subcategory 
are ammunition based uh, weapons that are basically guns. So you have these auto cannons, that's AC, and the machine gun in the middle. The machine gun has a bad reputation for being the worst weapon in the game, but you'll see me use it in combat because uh, it does have its uses. You know, a very limited range, very low damage, but rapid fire. So if, if you put a few of them together and have them grouped together when you fire them, they can be pretty devastating if you're close. The rapid fire also uh, makes it a little easier to hit things if you're moving around really fast. Okay, so the auto cannons, um, the ultra auto cannons are um, rapid fire auto cannons. So they fire extremely quickly, uh, very much like the machine gun. And they are devastating weapons. I like to use them sometimes. Um, but you can see they're very, very heavy. And they take lots and lots of space in your mech. So you have to use them with discretion. The LB autocannons are a little easier to control because they don't fire as quickly. But they don't fire as quickly. Um, they also tend to have a somewhat larger range than the ultra autocannons. Um, and they can be useful as well. I think it's a lot easier to do to um, uh, have ammunition management on these guys. With these guys, you'll run out so fast, it's um, it's almost ridiculous. Okay, so the last subcategory are the missiles, and these are um, uh, well, all they're all missiles, LRMs. Uh, we talked a little bit about a little bit in other videos. These are long-range missiles. And the number just refers to the number of missiles that are fired with one shot from this weapon. So LRM-20 is a rack of 20 missiles that all get fired at once um, versus an LRM-5 where you only have a rack of five. And the difference, of course, is that LRM-20s are significantly heavier. They take more criticals. Um, they do more damage, but if you miss, well, you waste more ammunition. Uh, streak. Short range, oh, uh, the LRMs are also capable of locking on, but they have a, um, um, a minimum lock on distance. Streak SRMs, these are short range missiles, are um, guided short range missiles. And you see their range is about 500 meters, a little less than 500 meters. These weapons um, uh, can be fired almost point blank with a weapon's lock. So they're very useful in short range combat. However, if you fire them dumb, unlike the LRMs, they do not fly in a straight line. They tend to uh, fly down towards the ground and explode long before they reach your target. You can still hit stum, hit things with them like that, but it's more challenging than with the LRMs. SRMs are not guided, so they're dumb fire only, but however, they do uh, travel in a straight line. Uh, the advantage of SRMs over the streaks is that they uh, weigh less, uh, about half as much as the streaks. So you need the targeting computer and uh, targeting equipment in the uh, in the streaks versus the SRMs just have half of that. Okay, so that covers weapons pretty well. Ammunition um, is kind of the same boat. So you see, I've got streak SRM here, um, one ton of ammunition. So ammunition comes in one ton amounts and the number on the side uh, tells you how many shots you have for that weapon so if i wanted to add ammunition to this weapon i'd highlight it and then add ammo or delete as needed and see this machine gun here has two tons and 400 shots um, which doesn't last as long as you might think if you hold down the trigger with that machine gun okay so the last class of things that you can add to mechs is the equipment class and we'll go through all those things. So the case is always grayed out. You can't select yes or no. And um, I don't think it works in this game. I don't know that they ever added that properly. But what it's supposed to be is an automatic ejection system for ammunition. So um, if the armor is compromised in a particular place that has ammunition stored, uh, sorry, um, it's supposed to automatically eject that ammunition uh, so as to not endanger the pilot. A mask system is a, um, I forget what it stands for, it's like Myome or Acceleration something computer, and it, um, uh, it, when you switch the computer on, it will increase your heat 
um, buildup, but it will allow your uh, mech to move faster uh, at any given throttle setting. So basically it increases your, um, your movement speed in at all speeds uh, versus not having the computer on. Now it is prone to um, bugs and damage which occur frequently if you're playing. Um, so you may have to turn it on and off and fiddle with it to get it to work. I find it works much, much better with mechs that are slower. Excuse me, mechs that are faster. So faster, lighter mechs has much greater effect and can be more useful. You'll probably see me use a, a very fast, very light mech at least once with a mask system. Um, the actuators, I haven't noticed that they really make a difference for many things. So I really have no idea uh, about that. I would have to do some research on that. Okay, so let's assign some criticals and make ourselves a mech here. So I'm going to put endosteel in the legs. Ferrofibrous there. Endosteel. Fibrous. Endosteel and ferrofibrous. And I'll put a heat sink in there too. And why don't we put the pulse laser medium in there. And... ER laser in the head, why not? That seems like a good idea, right? And we'll put the machine gun in here. I think I may have deleted some machine gun ammo. So actually, I'm a little overweight here, so it's not going to let me save. So I'm just going to delete this. And see, I'm OK. Now I need a couple extra tons, so I'll add heat sinks. That should be good. Okay, so heat sink there. Um, and then I'll put weapons in the arm. So PPC, PPC, heat sinks. I don't know that placing the heat sinks or the uh, armor and ferrofibrous uh, criticals in any particular spot has an effect, but I'll try to make it make sense um, uh, when I play instead of just putting them where I think is best for combat. Okay, so that's complete mech. No as unassigned criticals, not underweight. So I can save this, and it's called user variant one. I can rename it if I want, uh, I think. Can I do that? Optimize. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can rename it. Okay, so this was just a test. I'm going to uh, delete this mech. So we'll do this later. Okay, so this is Druid4574, and thank you for watching the... Um, mech design video.